Hello. Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> How's it going? How are you? <laughs> Get that up there. How was your weekend? Did you guys have a good weekend? Is it getting colder where you live? Because here it's beautiful and sunny again. <laughs> Hi, Vicki. How are you doing? I'm good, Malin. Thanks. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I um it feels like Tuesday to me. So <sighs> Yeah. It's weird having a work week that's Tuesday through Saturday. I'm still kind of like a little off sometimes, you know. But at the same time, it feels faster because I'm always like, "Oh, it's a day later than I thought." But then I'm always like, oh, I'm working on Saturday, <laughs> and it's Sunday. <laughs> on Sundays, I'm always like, oh, it's Saturday, and it's not, you know, it's the Anyway, so um, the time, we all survived the time change that had it. How was Halloween? Yeah, Vicki? I know, I kind of, I kind of like this weather. Like, I like that it's cold but sunny. Oh, wow, a couple of degrees above freezing. Oh, dang. It's been getting chilly at night and I finally get to put the down comforter on our bed but it's still nowhere near as cold as where most of you live you know so but it'll get in the 30s Fahrenheit here um a lot of nights over the like fall winter but I still know I know that's not that cold for you guys <laughs> so all right, so I'm a huge, huge doofus. Um, I don't know what happened when I ordered my knit, but I only got a yard of each. I think I must have ordered them thinking I was ordering them for the like short sleeve t-shirts that I was making. Oh, you guys. How did I not notice that? It felt like two yards, because you know, it's kind of a good knit. So um, I had to rearrange everything. After I posted it, after I created the calendar, after all that so here i actually updated the calendar you guys and this is this is our month hi cheyenne how's it going so um today is wednesday the 6th which is wait like that one right there it's always so weird the camera thing is always so weird like i'm pointing to my left but on the camera like when i look at me it looks like i'm pointing that way to me or i don't know anyway it's confusing like when you look in a mirror, you see a mirror image. When I look in the camera, I am seeing what you guys see when you were looking at me. So it's really weird, not a mirror image. <laughs> so um, Thursday, we're gonna sew the Caroline pajama bottoms. Today we're cutting them and we're gonna cut the um, Daisy Dress by Poppy and Jazz, which is also made by um, Sew Over It London. And then on Saturday, I'll sew the little dress. The dress is gonna be tiny, you guys. It's six to nine months size, so it's gonna be like this big. Little, <laughs> tiny. And I started in kids clothes, so I, I'm totally excited about doing kids clothes, even though I don't really have any babies in my life to, to give kids clothes to. I really, <laughs> it'll be fun. And then next week, we're going to do the drafting your own bodice and sloper along you know, kind of thing. I'm still working out all the uh, measurements, but I think I'll have them for you tomorrow and um, you'll be able to take down your measurements and you're gonna have to be very good about taking your measurements or have someone do it for you because they're very, they're very specific ones. They're not just bust waist hip. They're very, very specific. So, um, you know, that'll be fun. And then the following week, um, my knit will have arrived by Monday and I will pre-wash it and we will cut the top for the Caroline pajamas and then I'll do two little kids clothes a little tiny t-shirt and knit it's really cute and a little pinafore um, little dress in the cutest fabric ever it's got meerkats on it so and then I'm pretty sure I'm taking that last week off so we have a lot to do this month I'm actually sewing a lot even though we're taking a week off and next week we're not sewing at all so, oh yeah, so next week, I'm not sewing. Dang, I probably didn't need to rush that shipping as much as I did. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, it's gonna be good. So, that's what we're doing. So today, sorry, today we're cutting these out 
And um, I brought in my Caroline pajama. I wear the heck out of these things. So you can see some of the details. It's got a sewn on waistband, so it's a, a separate piece that's been sewn on. It's not just a fold over waistband, a little different, and it's mostly because of the pockets. Uh, it's got buttonholes for the drawstring. Pretty sure this is standard on the pattern. Um, and then it has pockets. I mean, all jammies need pockets, right? I think the only thing different I'm gonna do on my next pair is I'm actually gonna stitch down the pocket to the body of the pants. I actually ironed this for the stream. I don't wanna iron jammies, you know what I mean? And so that's my only pet peeve about these pants is that the pockets are wrinkly, which makes them poofy right here. And um, also just kind of, you feel it. Um, I also did the fake piping hem, but you can see like, this kind of flares a little bit, you see that? And that's because my piping probably, I'm gonna take a guess that I didn't pre-wash it. And that's why it um, shrank up a little bit. The funny thing is about bias is that it's shrinking like at an angle like this, not like this. So, it, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to like wrap your head around it. But you can see it's flaring because it's coming a little bit. I do have to taper the legs of my jammies a bit because um, the, when you print fabric on spoon flower, you lose a little cuttable width. Um, and I kind of forgot about that. So I'm going to have to, you guys aren't gonna judge me. I'm gonna put my pants a little off grain and I'm tapering the legs a little bit, but it won't be a big deal. So, so how does the lighting look, you guys? Does everything look okay? I don't have any extra lights on today because you guys have been liking it a little darker. Like this, this doesn't look too dark. So just tell me, because we're going to be cutting these fabrics here. Ouch. And, um, oh, here's the little daisy dress we're doing. It looks good? Okay, good. Um, and we're doing this little daisy dress in this really cute cat print. Can you see that? That's pretty cute. See those little kitties in there? <laughs> That's hearts fabric. Um, and they're sponsoring this. And let me, t let me tell you about it because th these fabrics are now um, on their website and they got a bunch of cute Japanese cottons. So this right here, the Japanese import, 100% cotton and it is item number 98872. Fruity Neko Cream is, I'm pretty sure, the color name. Um, and then it also comes in Biscuit, which is 98873. And then they gave us a little bit of Kona cotton here, this pink, uh, that I'll use how I want. Like I can use it as binding or as color or whatever. So, um, and that is 07509 medium pink is what this is. It actually looks pretty close on camera to what it looks like in real life. It's like a classic pink. It's a little brighter in person. Yeah, it's a little, everything's a little blue on my, on my screen. I feel like the natural light always does that, so. That's what those fabrics are. And if you saw that they've been advertising that they got all these Japanese imports lately, they're really cute. Like the meerkat, I want meerkat pants, you guys. All right, I'm just gonna move that off to the side. I took my fabrics and I ironed them and then I very precisely folded them and then look, I pinned them together because I'm gonna cut out two pairs at once. It's pretty easy to do. I just laid it on the table because, you know, you lose a little cuttable width. It's actually not very wide. So it's not too hard to manage to do this. And it's very easy to see lining up your prints because it's very clear where they printed it. There's a very clear like border around everything. I cut the selvage off because it was about this wide of just unprinted cotton. And um, I've got my pattern pieces here. Oh, I pinned my... Um, I tapered the leg and I just pinned it. <laughs> so accurate, right? <laughs> oh. So I'm going to be using bias um, that I pre-washed. Look, I proof I pre-washed it. Look, it's fuzzy. I pre-washed the heck out of it because I don't want that to happen again. And I'm just going to use it as fake bind, uh, piping by folding it in half and letting a little bit stick out like I did on that other pair. This one's for the floral here. And then I have a maroon for this one that, yeah, here we go. That I knocked on the ground. This is a little busy even for me, but I think as a little tiny color hit coming out of the um, 
fabric. It's kind of a maroon. It looks really dark on the camera, but it's actually uh, a maroon. It's a little more like a wine. Like the drink, wine you drink. <laughs> Not the kind you do. <laughs> All right. Oh, my heater just came on. Well, I may have to turn that off. I'm in reverse now. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this out. And you're going to see me do some voodoo on my yardage here. So how was your guys' Halloween? How was it? Did you guys get a lot of trick-or-treaters? Doesn't that feel like forever ago? It feels like forever. Alright, I think I kind of did a little pre-layout, so I've got this front here. Oh, are you guys all here? You're present and accounted for. I want, I want you guys to all say hi to Instagram. I'm going to do my, um, my Bimble and Pimble Sovember, is that what it's called? I'm going to do my Sovember post November oh my gosh I can't talk um and I because today's prompt is view and this is my view so I want you guys to all say hi Instagram so type it out I'll give you a second because I know there's a delay and then I'll do it see at least you're not on camera right so you didn't have any trick-or-treaters Vicky I'm sorry it's just kind of the way of the world now huh we had some I just get it all ready and I let my family do it I keep the dogs upstairs Okay, you guys, gotta say hi. Come on, say hi. Are you guys just listening right now? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> there we go. Mullen's saying hi. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna start. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> this is my view today. Everyone's saying hi to Instagram. <laughs> We're cutting out some things. Here we go. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you! Because you know what? I get kind of like, what do I post next? I'm glad that that challenge is only a week long because I always have good intentions. You know what I mean? All right, so um, I'm going to lay this here. And I know that right now it's off grain. I think I actually have to have it off grain a lot. But right, you guys aren't judging me. We all do it. They're jammies. And I made a big old mistake when I ordered my fabric. I forgot about that cuttable width thing. And I'm always telling people about it. I'm always like, just remember that even if the fabric says that it's 44 inches wide or whatever it is, you lose, you lose a bit, um, right here in the selvage because of the printing. So, so here we go. But I can still get my pants in there. I've got them, I've got them folded up because of the cuffs. What's this, wait, wait a minute. What's view A? Oh, view A is a pair of pants without cuffs at all. So you cut them right here and then, um, Oh, 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 this is just extra paper right here. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. I've just never made view A. That's what that is. Okay. All right. So we have this kind of askew. So I actually, um, if I wanted to cut these on cross grain, I can actually keep them on grain, but they'd be cross grain. I can actually get them all the way across. Weirdly, I cannot get the cuffs or the waistband though. Isn't that weird? Like, like layouts are so weird when you start looking at it. All right, so we're gonna cut this guy out. So I'm making the size 16 pants. This is one quirk about this pattern, is in general, um, I am the same like lettered size on top as I am on bottom. Now I understand like numbered um, sizing is a little different. I actually really understand that. But I'm not, in general, I'm pretty proportioned. You know what I mean? So the top for this pajama set, I wear, I cut out the size 12. For the bottoms, I cut out the size 16. 
and I've been gaining a little weight this past year, and so my size has gone up a little bit. I've never been a size 16 though, so I do feel like this is one thing you really wanna check out if you're making these. Check out the sizing really closely, maybe even take a couple of measurements. Measure some pajama bottoms in your drawer right now, or maybe take your tape measure to a store and measure a pair you've tried on and go, okay, you know, like measure as good as you can straight across the thigh. Look for the grain line on the fabric and kind of stay along that. Like right now, I'm not on the, I know I'm not on the grain right now. And then um, the inseam, you know, you know how to do that, but I'm really talking about the circumference and the rise. And so you can measure the rise, including the waistband. So your back rise and your front rise. And then the waist, like stretch it out, the elastic, measure that, and then measure across the thigh. Okay, because you might want to go up a size or two on these pants in particular. Just a weird quirk about them. Let's see if I can get this a little more on grain though. We, I had someone send us uh, some more ideas for our gift, our gift um, sewing in December. And um, Hart says they're actually gonna send us the, the bias apron pattern to do by de decades of style. What is, what is that, what was that called? What'd she call it? Hi Rachel. How are you? <laughs> it was like the one yard bias apron. Is that what it was called? Yeah, right, Vicki? I remember how, were you here the other day when um, Julia was here? And she said, I just made a pair of these and they were too small. Um, and I feel like that's that's kind of something I've heard a bit. I was pretty shocked, actually. I When I saw what size I needed to, to cut, because I looked at the size chart. I went by the size chart. I was kind of like, really? I've never been a size 16, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. But it all, that is what it, what it turned out to be. So, all right, here we go. I'm cutting. And I'm cutting through four layers of fa fabric right now because I have the moths and I have my floral underneath. I've tapered the ankle a little bit. I'm not gonna go right off the edge of the fabric because I need every little bit for my cuffs and things. Since I'm really patchworking these puppies together. I'm breaking all the rules. Where's my pin cushion? Here we go. I'm gonna watch out. I have some pins right here in the fold, keeping these layers together. And I'm gonna take them out right now. I also don't wanna accidentally throw away my pins. When I used steel head pins, I was fine. <laughs> Cause I got like a couple thousand at a time, but not these glass head pins, man, they're not cheap. All right. I started a new book to yesterday and I'm so into it. Oh, am I a little bit off right here? I'm like right on this edge. Um, does it, has anyone read those Louise Penny cozy mysteries? Um, what are they called? Uh, Inspector Gamache. There's a new one right now. New-ish. I always really like those. Me and Rayanne used to listen to all of them. All right. You guys are gonna all learn from me. So here I have my two pairs. Neither of my prints are one way. That's how I'm getting away with this too. Oh, really, Rachel? Oh, you're really busy. That's a bummer. That's so frustrating when you're like, I'm all ready to go. <laughs> Um, I don't really need to know that that's my back notch, but I will notch right here. Uh, there is a notch right here at the um, lengthen and shorten line. Usually this is also the knee line. I'm pretty sure this is just a matching notch, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Sometimes there's ease on the inseam between the knees like this. So, um, so you don't get any torquing, but let's see how I do on that. What what PJ pattern are you doing, Rachel? Okay. I keep putting my pattern in that other bin over there, and that is the daisy dress. 
I'm gonna bundle these separately. These are gonna be some crazy jammies. I'm into it. Back. Back. Side by side. This is the kind of fabric I hope I have scraps of, but I don't know. Oh, though, oh, oh, secret jammies. Literally secret jammies. <laughs> These are extra pieces here. Not extra, but they're pieces. Where's my waistband? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna have to do my pockets out of a um, <laughs> of a, a poplin contrast, but ironically, it's unprinted of this, so it's actually the same exact fabric. All right, so I'm gonna take out my pins here, here, all along the selvage, how I got it together. Make sure I take them out here. Now that I can use my weights. Okay. I went to a quilt show on Sunday. Oh, good, Rachel. Are they like a matching set kind of jammy thing? I don't want to ask too many questions. Since, you, since it's top secret. I'm gonna go a little into that over there since I have seam allowance. I hope you guys appreciate the fact that it's kind of killing me to do these off grain, all right? Just so you guys know, it really is. You said the back set for one leg and the front's for the other. You know what? That You are not the first person to do that, PA. I've done that too. <laughs> oh, you did, Rachel? Oh, okay, okay. Is it in the group? I think I saw it then. I need to go on Facebook on um, the computer because I'm worried that people have asked to join and I'm not getting that notification anymore. It was telling me in the app, so I was like, okay, great. I can delete this other thing. And then it stopped telling me, I think, so... I don't want to be ignoring people. All right. Oh, that's not quite where that is. That was folded back a little bit. I'm going to slide this down a little. I don't mess around with the rise. Can I? Oh, I can't really. I can't actually. I'm just going to have to remember that. I already cut the fly. So this has a um, fake fly. And if you don't really like the idea of sewing that or you don't like the idea of it just in general, um, you can just cut it off and sew that as a center seam. That's, that's it, that's how, you, that's how you get around a fake fly. It's not functional at all, so you don't actually have to have it. They are, I did have mine, see so. Here is my fake fly, right here. See that? Can't even see it very good. So, um, here's the stitching all the way around and then the fake part. Um, see it's sewn closed at the top, so if you don't want this, just sew this shut as a seam and trim it off, you know? You don't have to sew it. Um, the other thing is if you don't want pockets, then just tape your pocket piece together to your front. You could really make these really simple if you wanted. So you're gonna fold, this is your pocket piece. It's all in one. This piece right here is the corner of your pants that's missing right here, right? So just fold this together. 
And now you have what's missing of your waist over here, right? So you're gonna line this up on the notches, just like that. And now you have your whole front, okay? So you can just tape that on there, cut this out as one, cut off the fly. And then if you really wanna make these simple, you could extend the top of the waist in the front and the back, if this is all in one, um, to be the waistband and then you wouldn't have to attach a waistband. There's a lot of ways to really simplify these down. So, and for the waistband, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna add your elastic width twice, plus about a quarter of an inch. So say you want one inch elastic, you're gonna add two and a quarter inches. That's it, to the top. And then you'd have enough to fold over and then stitch your, because you already have seam allowance there. You're good. Yeah, and even that like quarter inch, you probably don't even really need that since there is seam allowance. You don't need the seam allowance. You just need enough below your waist, your um, elastic, so that you don't catch your elastic when you're top stitching it down. So, a lot of ways to make these really simple. If you wanted to knock out a few for your family, or um, maybe you want to sew these in maybe a jersey rather than a woven, I really think that's possible. Just maybe select a size lower or do a muslin, always a good idea. I, I really like having pockets in my jammies though because um, they just are really useful around the house, you know, because that's when you're around the house anyway. Okay, so this is the dot right here for your fly. If you've ever made the ginger jeans and, or you watched my zipper fly video, it's the same thing. Like, Closet Case made the ginger jeans, so it's kind of cool. Like, this is sewn the same way. Um, this little notch is to match your pocket up to. Like that. Just making sure I got all layers because it's two pairs of pants. And um, when I do this, hi, Terry. When I do the zipper fly, um, I cut this right now. So I'm actually gonna cut it right now, right there. That's kind of a pivot point. You need it to be free. All right, so I'm gonna cut my, or notch my knee like I did on the back and we're good to go. All right, I'm actually gonna take, no, I'm not gonna take my pins out of my tape ring. I'm cutting my jammies, Terry, but they're off green. I kind of, I kind of flubbed it on my fabric purchase. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, it's not ideal, but, um, we will see how they do being off green and I will put report back to you guys. And on my shirts, I don't know what I was thinking. I totally thought I ordered two yards from my tops and I did and I only ordered one. I don't know what I was thinking. It was one of those things where I was like, all right, the sale ends soon and I need to finish this. I already have stuff in my cart. Um, and then I started like getting sidetracked with like other things that I was interested in. And I kind of like got confused where my yardage, yardages was. Yardages was, yardages were, you know. Okay, so I have my waistband here, which right here you need to um, cut to. So I have this nice big piece here. Um, I still need the cuffs of my pant, which should be smaller since I tapered it. I also need my pockets, but I'm pretty sure I don't have enough for that. So, yeah, because I can't fit that there. I can't fit them here. I just can't. I could fit it maybe there, you know. Oh, close. But I'm just going to um, do it in poplin, and then I'm going to make a facing on the part where your hand, palm of your hand goes. That's how a lot of manufacturers will either save money if the fabric is really nice, or maybe it's a little thicker and they want the pocket to be lighter weight. They'll make the pocket out of a different fabric and then just put a facing right there. 
do plain pockets from my stash. I don't have a solid. <laughs> oh, Malin, right? It, the pain is real. Like the long sleeve thing. That's the long sleeves are like a yard. You you have extra, but you have. I need like 34 inches, 28 inches, something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna do the binding from my stash. Stash, Rachel. Um, I know the fabric's a little crazy, huh? Is that why you're saying that? <laughs> um, so these do need to be tapered, but I'm just going to look at it once I have them cut and do it afterward. I'll just do one. Even these I'm cutting off grain. It was just poop from the beginning, apparently. But a affordable way for me to get custom print fabric for jammy sets, right? I just don't really advocate this. Like, it's okay to break the rules occasionally, but um, no solids in the stash. I do have some over there, but they're not in this, either of these rings. I could maybe pull it off here. So here's the deal, Rachel. It's like once I start realizing, oh, I might need to supplement I might be too close to stream day to be able to find a fabric and pre-wash it in my stash, you know? I don't want to pre-wash just one little thing if I have no laundry to do. That's basically it. All right, so here's the back. And I'm not a, yeah, like a true quilter. I like prints. And what I consider solid, a lot of people don't. Rayanne always gave me a hard time about that. Not a hard time, but like a like funny because I would be like, ooh, this is a nice solid and it would totally be a tone on tone texture print, you know? She's like, that's not really a solid. I like prints. <laughs> I picked the poplin for the pants. That I'll save. All right, so um, I'm gonna cut my waistband and then I'm gonna fix the cuff widths of those. Did anybody see my tour of my, my studio? I realized that my quilt top is hanging on the wall. So you get a little like peek of how it's coming along. Cause I finished my quilt top. I don't have the like, it's so called the sash around the the border. I don't have that on it yet, but I do have all of my blocks are pieced and all of them are sewn together, and I'm happy. I'm happy with how it came out. I'm trying to go this way because I'm trying to reserve this fold right here. It looks like I'm wasting fabric though, doesn't it? But really, I'm just trying to stay away from the fold as much as possible. This is some pretty tightly woven fabric. I have a pretty good knife right now, but that's why, because it's so tight and I'm doing four layers, I am having to finesse it a little bit. to notch the center of this. I have a feeling though that, I mean the front and the back waists aren't the same. I can't remember how this goes. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm just gonna put this pattern piece away. There's no other markings on it. And I need to do my buttonholes by tomorrow. Do you think I can sew both tomorrow? You guys down for that? Batch sew? 
It's not really batch sewing in my opinion. When people say I batch sewed these and it's like two, I'm like, no, batch sewing is 20. <laughs> I'm hardcore. All right, so I'm gonna use you. I'm gonna use you. Deal with my tapers here. This is the back. Here's my cuff. So um, I'm gonna fold it in half like this, as if it's sewn. I'm trying to get all these pins off my table because um, I don't really want to accidentally, you know, rotary knife it. So I'm going to put my ruler, this edge, one and a quarter inches away from the seam there, the cut edge there. And I'm going to line this up like this. Oh my God. Let's just draw it on there. One and a quarter because the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. And so once you put five eighths of an inch here and five eighths of an inch here, that juncture It'll line up that way. So let's actually do um, two at a time. Like this. Doesn't really matter where along this way because look at how much I'm trimming. This is the back. That's the back. And I'm just going to take this line and continue it down. Like that. since I tapered them. Easy way to do it without changing my pattern and um, redrafting anything. So the reason I folded it is because in general, you have like a little bit of this going on because of the fold line. It's pretty subtle on these pants because they're really wide leg and straight. So now I'm going to transfer it to this one here. All right. And I think what I'm going to do also is add some notches. And I'm just going to go like this. It's just too much to fold here. I, it's not as accurate. Anytime you're folding things, it's not as accurate. So I'm going to add some double notches. So that always means back. Always. It always means back. If it doesn't on a pattern, it's because they've decided to kind of go off in their own direction. Um, but it's very standard that it's the, um, back and like when you see triple notches it's because maybe like you have like a midriff you know right here and so uh, if you have a midriff on the back of your bodice the top of the midriff to the bodice would have the double notches and then you, you're like oh shoot well I can't put double notches down here because then I won't know that that's the bottom or the top of the midriff so then they do triple or sometimes when you see like color blocking single double triple <laughs> and then they'll start splitting them apart a double and a single <laughs> so <laughs> What's that? The letter low system? What is that, Rachel? Um, this is the front and this is the back. I'm putting my double notches. I, they're probably not going to line up. I'm just reminding myself that they're that end of the side seam end. It doesn't matter if they match as long as I know which end they go to. Hi, Heather. How's it going? Okay. I'm just notching my um, bottom cuff here. I kind of 
altered it a little bit. I tapered my legs. I'm just uh, making my cuffs match now to the taper and then just giving myself some guiding notches. I try and put my cuffs with the pant, you know, back, back. There's my waistband and then I have my front here. Doesn't matter how you do your stacking up of everything, just make it logical to you. Like whatever, like the first thing you think of doing, do that. Because it's probably the first thing you'll think of doing later on too. <laughs> it's drafting using the golden rule. It looks really interesting, it works for every body shape. Oh, so is it like a, um, a book or a computer program? Letter love system. What is it? There's so many um, things out in the world, isn't there? All right, let's do the front. Actually, don't need to notch these because the back, just having the back notch is fine. Oh, never mind. I'm not doing it for what goes front to back, am I? I'm doing it so that I know I'm sewing it the same. Okay, we can use the pant itself this time. So that's my front, this is my side seam, just in case you're following along. Folding my cuff, I'm gonna put it an inch and a quarter. That's not straight right there. We're gonna change that. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job cutting that today. One and a quarter. Oh, there we go. I was like, I just straightened that. Oh, interesting, Rachel. You're gonna have to let us know how it is. That's cool. You're definitely watching some very slapdash pattern drafting right now. Right? So it's nice, like, if you're doing something like this, if you really tapered your um, pant, try and get it that it, you have a, a pretty good angle, like right angle, as close as you can, right here at the bottom of the hem. Because if you don't, you'll end up having a point at the side seam. Like when it all the back comes to the front, you'll have a point like this or like this. So. There we go. Now I'll do the other one. So I measured all my bias um, and I needed about 90 inches. And I'm going to do the, um, around the facing of the top, around the pocket, and then around the cuffs of the pants. That's all I'm going to do on the pants because it just feels like anything else is a little, like, not worth it because you don't really see it. I don't know where else you would do it. Maybe on the waist, you could do it around the waist seam, you know, if you wanted. This one needs to be trued up as well. I was looking at my pattern drafting book from college. It's pretty dated um, as far as like the sketches and things in there and the style of sketching. You know, there's trends all the time, right? In everything we do. So you can always see a book um, even if it's dated a little bit. But the content is not. The content is still very good. And what I found really interesting was how she talked about sizing was, it was really nice to see that even, you know, 30 years ago or whenever that book was written, they were still, pattern drafters were still kind of agonizing over the fact that the industry wanted everyone to be standard and they knew that they, that we aren't. And um, they said, you know, you're going to have to adhere to some sort of standard, but at the same time, people aren't. 
And and it was a really good like like it wasn't they didn't gloss over it. And I really appreciated that. Because I, I do think the garment industry gets a lot of flack. Like as a pattern drafter, I would get a lot of flack from people saying, How come you don't make things that fit me? And um I totally understood them. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, but the thing is, like every company is responsible for their size chart, right, and whatever they're making. And like, it's not for me to say, well, yeah, the company I'm making patterns for isn't isn't your company. It just isn't. It didn't mean that I didn't think that they didn't deserve clothes that looked like that if they liked those clothes in their sizes. It was just that my company didn't do their size or um, they didn't make, or, I got it a lot for women's versus men's. You know, when I was in the outerwear company, companies, they would, women would be like, I want that for me. I don't want to buy extra small men's. That doesn't fit. It just doesn't. We're not, we're not men. Women are not men. Men are not women. As far as our shape goes, you can wear certain pieces of clothing and, and it works, but physically we're different proportions and we're, you know, we have different bumps. <laughs> so um, women would be really upset if they couldn't, you know, have whatever that outdoor piece of clothing was that could save their life in their own size because just buying it in a smaller size didn't always work and it wasn't as um, functional and function was at the forefront of everything we did. So, all right, so I'm making my pockets out of this. <clears throat> this is actually, you can actually see, look, I, this, was a, this was knit print, can you see that? If you're familiar with the fabric I designed that looks like knitting, this was, this was cut off of the end because we would buy something like 90 yards and Spoonflowers, I don't know what their rolls came in, but maybe they were close to 90 and they would just print the whole roll except for whatever's left on the roll. So sometimes we'd get like four yards of fabric that wasn't printed. And it would be because it was cheaper for them not to cut that off and try and print it probably, so. All right, so I'm just gonna make a couple of uh, pockets here. Um, I'm actually going to do this twice. I need four pockets. I'm actually really enjoying some, some of the hashtags, or not uh, hashtags, but companies I follow are making um, clothing for people who don't want to identify as one gender. And I am following that because I find it really interesting how they're dealing with the pattern drafting side of it, you know? It's really fascinating to me. It's always a conundrum how you're going to deal with fitting everybody for your designs. And if you make it for everybody, maybe not everybody wants to buy your stuff, right? So then you put all this effort into <laughs> making all these sizes and then you're like, oh shoot, these other sizes don't sell and I have to discontinue them. And then maybe five years from now, people are like, you don't make anything of my size. <laughs> so it's a lot of work. All right, um, I'm just gonna notch all these things cause they're here. I'm not sure what they go to the fold line I know what that is so now I just need to make a facing that basically is about two inches parallel to this line this way um, I feel like that's a safe distance and it's gonna be this piece right here so I'll draw it on here let me try and find a soft lead pencil yeah, that'll be really cool, Rachel. I don't really understand what it is. So I, I'm eager to hear what it is. All right, so here's the, here is the um, opening right here. I don't really need this line on here, but I'm just gonna draw it. I didn't actually draw, it's like the tissue is really wiggly right now. 
Um, all right, so then I'm gonna do it like two inches past. It's pretty good. Ah. So this piece right here, I can just serge this and top stitch it down. It doesn't really need seam allowance. It's not in a seam. It's just a piece of the matching fabric that's gonna sit on top of the pocket. Oh, I need this. <laughs> I'm always a weirdo on Wednesdays, aren't I? Keeping them separate just in case I decide to just sew one pair tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, Terry. Yeah, because you don't want to have to fit yourself. Yeah. It's it's crazy how hard it is, you know? It really is. And you know, it's I always try and think like what could have prevented us from getting there? Is it our the pressure of society? Ooh, this fits right here. Is it is it, you know, the pressures of society to look a certain way cuz what could we have done? To prevent that, you know? Pressures to look a certain way, but then like say, like what would our, be our solution? Hey Megan. Megan, I haven't sent you that pattern. I keep forgetting, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I keep forgetting. Even if you don't want it, you're getting it. All right, so this is the pocket. Right, Terry. You did, Megan? So is that your first needle sharp box? I don't know why, I thought I had missed that and then when I saw she was shipping, I was like, oh, I didn't miss these. <laughs> right, Malin? Yep, it's your second one, cool. All right, so when you're making this pattern piece, sometimes when you get to the sewing table, you might get a little turned around on like what's what's up, you know? Like what's going, pointing up. <laughs> Not like what's up, <laughs> but like <laughs> what is, you want the this way up type thing. So what you could do is just pin it to the pocket. That's like the clearest thing, right? That makes the most sense. You'll remember completely then. You can just go like that, pin it there. You're gonna make it into top for the, ooh. Thanksgiving's nice and late this year. The only drawback of that is um, for those folks that want a, more space between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So there we go. For me, my daughter's birthday is um, kind of close to Thanksgiving, so. You know, <laughs> be nice if it were more separate. Was what if Nan Nancy got that fancy um, cutting system? Remember that with with the magnets? I wonder how that's going. Where's that system from, Rachel? Letter low, letter low system. Sorry, I don't talk to many people during the day, so my <laughs> voice are a little funny. All right, so let's put this guy away and let's move on to our little, our wee kids clothes. This is all I have left. I was cutting it close. All right, so we are making this little Daisy dress. It is Germany. Okay. Is it in English as well? 
So this is a very classic children's silhouette. It has a little like um, flutter kind of cap sleeve. It's not even a sleeve. So the bottom lower portion of the armhole is bound. Um, and then it has a gathered skirt. And then the back, are there any flat sketches in here? Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is great. The back is fully buttoned. So this is my only thing that makes me a little nervous of, about this is that um, uh, children's wear, like if it's, it is a baby size, so we're doing six to nine months, um, sometimes buttons on the back can be uncomfortable. So this is so over it, yeah. So she came up with an offshoot of patterns called um, Poppy and Jazz. And um, yeah, we're making this little, goes to six, up to six years old. So we have this one this week, and then we're going to have a little t-shirt called the Elm t-shirt in like a bamboo knit, and then a pinafore. So the Elm can be boys or girls, and then the pinafore, um, Boys or girls, in my opinion, but you know, I think it's a girl's girl's pattern is probably how it's stated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is kind of hard to to button like to dress your kid when the buttons are on the back. Um, there is a really easy way to just do the back bodice as buttons, or the you know make it to the front. Um, you can even line the bodice so you don't have a facing because this has a facing. Um, and then you just do a little like um, loop, a loop, placket and the skirt. I feel like if it's big enough around here, which it looks like it is, like the, it's a boxy shape, you probably don't need the buttons to go through the waist. Yeah, you could do snaps, smart. Yeah, so, um, I did children's wear for a really long time. I'm only telling you the things we talked about a lot. So that's what comes up sometimes is um, how you get it on and off the kid and how comfortable it is on the child. You know, kids, especially in this six to nine month range, um, they don't have a neck <laughs> and their heads are pretty big. The, in proportion to their body um, because you when you're born your head is the closest thing on your body that's almost full size am I right ladies <laughs> so um it's one of those things that grows the least and um, you you know so like a little t-shirt getting it over a baby's head you have to have quite a big opening but then if you if you don't um, put snaps at the closure. You can have, you'll see those t-shirts that are really big necks. Like you wonder why on a t-shirt on a baby, you'll see why like, or see all like, it's like loose and baggy. And that's why, cause you need to be able to get it over the head. And you don't want the, it's cause some kids are like, nope, don't put that over my head, you know? So this is the whole skirt. <laughs> so little. <laughs> so um, let's see, this is, Gather yeah, along this edge. All right, so this is the back. Okay, she just marked it upside down. That's all it is. Okay, this is the fold. I don't think I can get that all the way across. So let's see if I can do this and then that and then that. And then you have all these little pieces. It's got a Peter Pan collar, which means um, the collar lays flat uh, against the body. Super easy to sew those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Babies have some big heads anyway, so. They trace this on that Swedish tracing paper, so it makes it really nice. Just sticks, you know. I won't cut this off grain. Um, this is the little sleeve. See, like I say, it's just like a little cap and you do gather it. Here's the collar. Um, because there's a back opening, it's not a collar on the fold. So you cut four of these. You might even be able to get two of them right here. Move that over a little bit. We have facings, which is kind of a crack up on a kid's clothing. 
this is on the fold as well. Um, I may just like open this one out. This is the facing on the skirt. Let's see. <laughs> you are harsh. You're a harsh auntie. <laughs> All right, so I just need to make sure I remember to open this one out, correct? And I needed to trace this one out one more time. So this will be here, this will open out here, and then I can do this one here. Yeah. All right, so let's, I really like to use a clean ruler. Because that grain line ruler is getting manky. All right, so this is the um, Japanese cotton that they recently got in. It's so cute. Let's see, is it one way? It doesn't look one way either. Has anyone played the cat game Neko Atsume? Dang, I haven't opened that up in a while. Um, these little cats look like those cats. Itty bitty. The great thing about sewing kids clothes, this is also a great gift idea, is it's super fast. It's um, done before you know it. I'm going to mark the center there. I'll just leave these pieces with the patterns. cut too. So um, like I was saying, you could line the bodice um, and just cut two in lining. Um, even if you just line the back, you cut two in line the lining and um, one on the front and you could line the whole bodice and get rid of all these facings. <laughs> um, what game? Um, it's a phone game. Neko Atsume. I'll type it in the chat. Uh, I'm not making a boy version of this one. I mean, if you want to call it boy or girl, like, you know, depends on what you think is of as boy or girl. Neko Atsume. That's that game. It's a kitty collecting game. It's really cute. It's so relaxing. So you just put toys out and food out and try to attract kitties to your yard. It was like a big deal a few years ago. Um, I'm making a, a t-shirt that it can be whatever gender. And then this is a little dress and then I'm making a pinafore as well. So, and this is sponsored by hearts. I was like, sure. I'll sew some kids clothes. It's been a while. I'm trying to think though. Oh, probably my own kid. I was like, when was the last time I sewed kids clothes? Well, that's right. I have one of those, but it's been a while. She was pretty picky. She wouldn't really let me sew her what I wanted her to wear. <laughs> I never got that pleasure. Oh, what a weird armhole. Okay. This would be a great use of a 28 millimeter blade. <laughs> Look how sharp that curve is. Dang. No. Don't pull. Hi, Samia. How's it going? You are welcome anytime you can make it. I just made, I cut out the pajama bottoms and now we are making a little dress called the Daisy dress by Poppy and Jazz Patterns. Oh, you are, Megan? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome that you did that, Rachel. 
Okay, so we got these there. All right, let's see here. This one's on the fold here. Yeah, and if you, um, I'm so tempted to line this because you could also then um, get rid of the binding step, which I know everyone would really like to do. And the you just need a skirt facing or you add it to the skirt right here and then fold it over. There's a lot of really great ways you could make this a little simpler. Hi, Beverly. You guys already have all your gift ideas. You don't need that gift streaming week. <laughs> this will fit better right there. Let's see if it's on green. Yeah, so I think like um, if you wanted, you would just cut two of the front four of the back and then um, because the the waist seam is open because you don't have to clean finish the gathers to the waist seam you can but then you'd be doing some hand sewing or top stitching you could totally do that though you know it just depends on how much work you want to put into it but I find lining things a lot easier on kids clothes because then you don't have you wouldn't have to cut this or this or um, the other little facing and you could because um, you could just extend this out and then you could put the collar so your front your outer front and your backs together at the shoulders put the collar on and then put the little sleeve on I would even leave the side seam open yeah and then you would attach the lining around the neck and the armholes and the center back seam like that center back seam around the neckline and then the armholes pull it through then sew up your side seams i maybe i'll cut a lining out and i'll ask them how they want me to sew it because it would be kind of useful to see that um, it would be a lot easier and a lot less pieces. I don't I don't like um, removing a binding stuff though. I love binding so much. <laughs> All right, I need a really tiny blade for this little tiny kerf. There's a little note on here that says gather sleeve to here. All right, I'm gonna notch the center front at the neck and at the skirt. That'll help me later. I know it will. You've got a tall 10 year old, it sounds like, Megan. You don't need 28 millimeter blades very often, but this is one of those moments. I used to only use a 20, 20 millimeter. <laughs> That's pretty small, you guys. It, they come smaller, but um, um, when anyone would see it, they're like, why do you use such a small blade? And I just didn't think anything of it. I just really liked cutting these curves with the 28 because it's a lot more easy to maneuver it. And then when I started like cutting out so many layers of things, I was like, oh yeah, I, I need a deeper blade, you know, just for the number of layers. I'm gonna notch these with the scissors. When you're talking about things this small, it's best to be careful. <laughs> and I don't know the seam allowance off the top of my head yet. Hoping it's quarter. Two pairs of collar and one pair of interfacing. So I still need to cut this again. And I was thinking this will be here. I can do that. I, I decided to do the whole dress in the, in the floral. Oh. 
Does he like being tall? <laughs> um, let's see here. This one right here looks a little off grain. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line up the fold with a line on the table. Cause my selvage is gone right here. Not my selvage, I, I have my selvage, I could do that too. Like say you didn't have your selvage though, you could do this, you could just measure it to that line, nine and a half. Nine and a half, nine and a half on the line there, um, or just do it to your selvage. I know, right, Megan? I know, I have this little piece here I'm kind of excited about. I probably, I, well, I could I could line this in the pink. I was gonna say, I don't really have enough to line this in the, the floral here. Let's see, this might fit better here. Right here. Something like that. I have a Little Mermaid song stuck in my head. That's really annoying. That Who's It's and What's It's one. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think I've heard it. Let's see where that salvages. There we go. You could even go like this. That would be probably better use. Let's see. All right. Megan, if you're looking for kitty collecting games though, I got my my mom and my sister hooked on this one called the Furistas Cafe. You know, like fur. Aww. <gasps> Tall kid, PA. Yeah, right, Rachel? Oh, really, Megan? Oh my gosh. I, did I ever tell you about the bet I had with um, my daughter? <laughs> Don't make bets. I was pretty convinced that I was going to be taller than her because her dad is shorter than my dad. Like my husband is shorter than my dad. And my mom is 5'1 as well. I'm a little over 5'4. My husband's maybe 5'8, five, 5'10, five, I don't know. And, um, I, Cricket was never very, very tall. Not short either, but you know, she's not, not very tall. And I made her a bet. I was like, there's no way you're gonna be taller than me. I was really convinced, you guys. And even my chiropractor was a little bit on my side. And then he kind of was like, yeah, I'm not on your side. And then she passed me up, so. I don't think she's passed up my husband though. But when she passed up like my mom, that was so weird seeing seeing my kid be taller than my mom. It's so such a weird thing. It feels like a weird power thing shift, you know? I don't know why. Alright, I'm just setting my ones aside that need interfacing still. So I don't forget. I always do that. Cut two sleeves. I need four of these. So um, we can probably use this piece here for two of them and then the spot that we were thinking about before. Okay, so I need, what can I get? How can I get the best here? 
this, with this. All right, can I get that on there? Oh yeah, I can. Perfect. And then we need do this. These weird pieces, man. I could do the under collar in pink. How about I do that? I'll do the under collar in pink. That'd be cute. You see a little hint of it. This is the little sleeve. It's a little like um, flutter style. For a kid though. all this <laughs> he wouldn't he wouldn't do anything like that yeah right Melinda that's what I'm thinking too I feel like the the food that growing boys need is kind of intense they really need a lot of food all right so I'm gonna set this aside. I'm pretty sure I'm done with this. And then we're gonna get the um, pink under collar. Nothing like Kona cotton. So I'll make sure I get those right sides together even though I can't really tell the right and the wrong side of the fabric. I still wanna be consistent. It's not a true under collar because it's not smaller. But we can do that at the table. I'll show you guys when we're sewing it, how to make it a true under collar because then um, it won't, you know, the underside won't peek out. You could even put a little piping. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> that's good, Megan. I'm kind of, that's me. I eat healthy and junky. <laughs> We cut the pajama bottoms out, Nancy, and now I'm doing this little um, daisy dress by Poppy and Jazz Patterns, um, like which is an offshoot of Sew Over It, I think, and this is sponsored by Hearts. All right, so let's put our collars together. You can always tell, the one that has this like blunt curve, that's always the front. The one that has the taper is usually the back. That's, yeah, right? Yeah. Especially because, think of it this way, you want room for your buttons and buttonholes, but sometimes people like to cover them too. There's no double notch, so I could be wrong, but for now, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it would be cute with a lace collar, and you can buy pre-made lace collars, especially like this. They are not, there's no shortage of those once you get into that rabbit hole. You could even knit one there's a lot of people who do like combo knitting and sewing things. You could do a lot of fun stuff. I mean, kids clothes is really fun that way. You know, you really can do a lot of um, interesting, you know, things. I'm gonna cut a little bit of binding here. I have a little bit of the stain right here that I think my iron just did to this fabric. So let's just, I'm just gonna cut this off. I don't 
don't need much binding. It's just for the um, underarm of the, or the sleeve, the sleeve. Oh, did you send a link? It might not let you. Did it let you? It doesn't, it frustrates you, Samia. Did you see that I pinned, I when I did the jammies, I pinned it. Cause I totally agree, it can be really frustrating. The shifting and all that, yeah. Especially if you don't have a big table to lay it all out flat and then cut it because that can be really frustrating. All right, so I think that this is binding that goes to the inside of the garment. So I'm gonna make it a, a like one inch wide. And I'll just do two of them. That should be plenty. that all right we just need our interfacing and go use this I need one of these these and then we need our center back keep wanting to say center front but it's center back with the buttons and buttonholes so you you wouldn't really need to do this if you lined it you can put a little bit of interfacing behind the um, button and buttonhole area just affixed right to the top to not the top but the like where the button placket is. You just iron it right there. Okay, so this is my pattern piece for this right here. This is the front. I keep picturing this as the back. <laughs> like, why does it have a fold if it's the back? It doesn't. It wasn't the back. Let's see, is this wide enough? No. Interfacing doesn't have a grain line, so you can kind of get away with a lot. I'll just cut two the other way. Here's one. My two. Hey, Nancy, I was thinking about your magnet system. How are you liking that? How's that going? The cutting mat and magnets. Cause um, Rachel's been talking about this pattern um, system that she just got called Letterlow. And it just reminded me of your magnet thing. All the wee pieces. So tiny. You love it. <laughs> oh, I know, Megan, but you got this. It just means you're going to really take your time with it and you're going to make sure it works, you know. Do you always use the system, Nancy? Do you find like you can't you, you can't do it without it now like you're really into it? Yeah, you like the magnets instead of pattern weights. That's cool. These are extra. All right. So um, for those of you that joined late, I just wanted to show you that I adjusted the calendar for the month. And um, obviously because I made a little like boo-boo with my um, fabric purchase for the <laughs> For the jammy tops and I ordered a yard each for some reason I don't know why so instead um, I'm going to do the pajama bottoms tomorrow I may do both I may just do one if I pre-surge everything I think I can do both I flat seam or flat seamed I, I French seamed these jammies and they're so nice that I kind of want to do that like 
there's something about French seams. It just makes it the garment more comfortable. I don't know. I might do that. So I might just do one pair tomorrow. So we'll just see how we're doing. And then on Saturday, we're going to sew this daisy dress um, start to finish. Next week, we're going to do our bodice sloper, basic block, whatever you want to call it. I always call it a basic block, but a lot of people love the word sloper. And I've heard that used. It must be an East Coast, West Coast thing. What's not good, Megan? You just want to string your fabric. And then um, I'm going to think I'm going to have all the measurements for you that you need to start taking by tomorrow. But if not, by Saturday. And then you, you won't need them until like next Wednesday. And that's where we're going to start. We'll start with our front bo bodice. Do our back bodice on Thursday. And see where we're at by Saturday. And then the following week, I will do my jammy tops or at least one. And then the um, Elm t-shirt by Poppy and Jazz and the um, Willow Pinafore in the hugest fabric you ever saw. And those are both sponsored by Hearts as well. So so if you want any of that Japanese cotton or the Kona cotton or any of their fabrics, um, they're on their website and you get, yeah, I know. And you get the discount, the 10% off, so, so 10. I know, Megan. I don't know why I did that. I don't know if I will, Malin. I'm trying to decide how to do it. You know? Is there, isn't there a way for me to post a document? I don't know. I know I could do this on Patreon, but I'm not sure how I do it with the stream. I'll, I'll think about that, Malin. It's not an incredibly long list. But it is very specific. <laughs> so you are going to be kind of like, ew, I don't want to do a couple of these because they're kind of weird. They're going to feel, you're going to feel like you could take some of these measurements a few different ways. And so I'm going to encourage a lot of you to, when you do this, to put tape on your body so that you measure in the exact same place. Yeah, that's true, Malin. Awesome, Terry. Yeah, and so I want to be clear what a sloper is too. So a sloper is, it's your bodice, waist up. It doesn't mean you need to make everything you wear stop right here at your waist, obviously, right? That's the beauty of a sloper. It is exactly, you know exactly where things are on the body. And then you make your adjustments from there. You're like, okay, I know that spot was right here at my narrowest part on my body or the part I consider my waist. It may not be your narrowest spot, right? It's just the place you consistently call your waist, right? I, I use the narrowest spot, which is pretty high on me, especially now, okay? And then like, but when I make my basic bodice, I'm gonna make it like three inches longer and I'm gonna flare it out a little for the hip, you know, stuff like that. So usually a bodice can, uh, includes your front, your back, your sleeve, and a skirt of all things. Mainly because um, making a pants sloper is a whole other like kettle of fish, okay? And then the skirt, you know, you can pr pretty much, you know, Combine the skirt to the bodice to make the bottom part, but we're gonna be okay without the skirt. Um, and then from this basic bodice, this is not something you would wear out in public. You're not gonna sew this up and be like, look at my basic bodice, yo, <laughs> because it's not going to be anything. It's like if you were to make your dress, you as a dress form, and you put your cover over your dress form, that's what the bodice is. It's a, it's a replica of your body. Yeah, Nancy, absolutely. You don't even really need a basic bodice because you have a dress form that is you, but it is handy when you wanna do flat pattern drafting rather than three-dimensional draping. So, um, Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to be clear about what a basic bodice and the sloper is. I'm going to go over this again because we might get some new folks that join us for this. And I just want to be clear that basic bodice and the sloper is basically where your body, it, your skin, it's your skin, you know? 
that you add ease to garments and this is why you always have this block this sloper and then you always know from that point where to go right because on the archer button-up shirt you have a lot more ease than say you know a fitted dress right so that's why they're different and then once you start having a few patterns and you know how those fit you can use those as a you know a template not as a block but as a template to make something like you're like oh i really like how this pattern fits um and i'm going to use it to make this because all i want to do is change the sleeve and the neckline you know it's less work so that that's what we're going to be doing i typically i will admit i typically draft my bodice and sloper as a um a, like as something that would go to my hip and it flares and it would be like a little blouse, you know, almost, you know, so. Yeah, Terry, right? I'm really thinking about it a lot. Like, um, I think the Beatrice form is the one that's a scan of your body. It's quite an investment, but if you plan on sewing a lot and you don't want to make mistakes and you have the money, it is a, it's worth it. If your body's changing a lot right now, you might want to wait, you know, look into an adjustable. Do what Nancy did, the bootstrap dress form. You could make your own. So there's that. I'm, I'm with you. I, I would really like a dress form that's me. But say I started doing a line of patterns for the world, I couldn't use my dress form. I, ha I would have to have something more standardized. That's just how it is. I can't start with my fit issues and foist them all on you. It's the exact same issue as using a standardized form, but at least with a standardized form, we know what we're dealing with. That's awesome, Nancy. That's good to know. Maybe I should look at that. You ended up using the original one, Nancy, or did you end up making a second one? I remember you having some things right so yeah we all feel that way <laughs> you you like the one that like the change that changes size some of those are okay some of them are meh you know they they can be a little they the gaps that the when the dress form adjusts the gaps between them kind of can become an issue so you just gotta find one that you like that works for you. If I were to buy a dress form, my ideal dress form, I would want two. I would want, I would want three, honestly. I would want, <laughs> I would want a curvy one that's a block, a missy one that's a block, and then me. And I want them all pant forms too. I don't want dress forms. Pant, pant forms have legs. Dress forms are the like classic one you always see. Oh, okay, Nancy. But you didn't mind doing that process so much that you ended up going through it again. So that's good. I might look into that. Yeah, there you go, Rachel. I mean, you can make your bodice, put it, you know, bake your, make your blocks, put it on your dress form and then stuff it. Yeah, right, Malin. Right? I know. It's like, well, I don't know if I want to dress form of my body right now. But I think Rachel has the right idea. You can pad it a little bit here and there, you know. I feel like, too, if you can put one of your own garments on your dress form um, and use it as a guide, then put clothes on over that as well. That helps. So, like, you could stuff those clothes a little bit. Anyhow. All right. So this is our adjusted schedule. Um, and Care, I'm pretty sure it was Carrie Ridley that sent us the... Um, some ideas for the gift sewing at the beginning of November. Yeah, right, Nancy? A pant would be awesome. That's my only drawback, I think, with either the Beatrice or the Alvinon, I can't remember, is that the um, inseam on their pant forms is like this long. So it's basically like you're lopped off right past that. Did you, Beverly, and how's that work? Yeah, right, Megan, I know. I mean, I've heard of the duct tape one. The duct tape one was really popular for a while. 
the most difficult part is stuffing it. I do not doubt that at all. It's the same thing with doing the um, pin cushions. <laughs> you can really shape it and form it. All right, well, I will see you guys tomorrow. We're going to sew the jammies, and um, um, it'll be fun. I'm excited. So thanks, you guys, for coming along. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> what, well, Beverly, could you make, like, a knit, a knit um, like, thing over it, you know? Not a sock, but you know what I mean. Make a leg form to go with their bootstrap. Oh, okay, Melin. Hmm. Nothing about that. Maybe I should just try the bootstrap thing. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, guys. Thanks for coming, and um, I will see you guys um, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. And we're going to sew the jammies together. I think I'm going to do French seam. So I may, I may only do one pair. Sorry. Not that you guys care. But I want the second pair. <laughs> so maybe I'll prep some of the other one. So, you know. All right. All right, you guys. Asta mañana, iguanas. Thanks so much for coming. You guys are awesome. Happy fall. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>